How about we go straight to the next article? Let's do it. All right. You're going to click the button. Intel Arrow Lake S to be 6 to 21% faster than Raptor Lake S. XE LPG graphics show up to 2.4 times improvement. Up to 21% faster. Hmm. Depending on which benchmark. Yeah, <laughs> up to. I, th I think the 6% is probably, hey, that sounds familiar. 5% year over year. So basically, we've just got a little refresh. Raptor Lake is a legit improvement. A legit improvement over 8th, 9th, and 10th gen. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Alder Lake was a nice jump. Raptor's a jump yep. above that. Yep. It looks like 14th, and well, 14th gen is going to be Raptor Lake Refresh. 15th gen will be Arrow Lake. 16th gen will be... Is that Meteor Lake? No, that's not... Uh, uh, no, uh, they changed Lunar it. Lake. Lunar. And then 17th gen will be Beast Lake. Unless they change that again. So 15th gen Arrow Lake will be a little improvement. And that'll be the first one on LGA 1851. Supposedly. I don't know that that's 100% official, but I... The prototypes exist, so I think that's pretty locked in at this point. Uh -huh. You know, in order to have something, because Arrow Lake is due late next year. Yes. It, the, the boards already have to exist. Prototypes have to exist at this point. If they don't exist now, it's not coming out Correct. next year. Um, it takes years to develop the stuff. And, of course, they got to build prototypes and test them. You remember that? Did, did you watch the video with me on Gamers Nexus on the tour of AMD's lab? Nope. If any of you are curious on a back-end view, go check out Gamers Nexus channel on YouTube. He did a video touring AMD's tech development testing lab where they showed their endless arrays of machines that are constantly testing things, testing RAM sticks, testing SSDs, testing motherboards to make sure everything works. Very interesting uh, view of what goes on. And a reminder that this stuff is all very hard. And so when you go, why don't they just do X? Well. What's interesting is when you watch them, they might have tried it. There's a really good segment of that where they talked about vapor chambers and actually shrinking the height of the um, uh, integrated heat spreader on Ryzen. For AM5 and Zen 4, they looked at changing the top design of the chip. And they said they got a three degree centigrade temperature drop by doing it. Okay. So why didn't they do it? It would have broken compatibility with coolers and required all new coolers. Oh. It would have changed the Z height of the chip by enough that, that it, the question that, that AMD had to ask themselves, and the tech guy presenting it demonstrated a really cool combination that you don't see very often. He understood the technical side, and he understood the viable product side. What he works on has to be turned into a mass producible, consumer product mm -hmm. and he said we did succeed but but we got this much benefit and it would cause this much trouble and so it's not worth doing and then they looked at vapor chambers which they said okay that helps but how much does it cost to, what does it do to your manufacturing cost what does it do to your production yield mm. and so they look at a lot of things like that that you go well they could probably create epic cpus in low volumes as prototypes and one-offs. But can they produce a million of them to ship to Amazon, Newegg, Best Buy, Micro Center, etc.? There's a world of difference between cost is unlimited and, and this has to sell for a certain MSRP on the shelf or nobody's going to buy it. Mm. And let's be honest. Let's look at what has happened with Zen 4. The price of AM5 boards, the price of DDR5, AM5 and, and Zen 4 did not have the uptake that the previous ones, they cost too much. The boards, yep. they still cost a lot. Yep. You can currently buy a Z690 Steel Legend for about 150 bucks. 
but the X670E Steel Legend is 300. The boards are double the price for similar-ish features. And that Steel Legend uses DDR4 RAM, and while it's a little slower, it's half the price. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, it doesn't matter. It's got to be the best. Yeah, but companies create the best. NVIDIA goes and makes a 4090, and everybody goes, well, that's just ridiculous. Who's going to pay that? Well, they made you the best. Yep. Do you want them just not to make it? Exactly. What does everybody have to say about that? Uh... What do you want to add to that? What do I want to add to it? Um, it says here that the integrated graphics should be 2.2 times that of Raptor Lake. So it seems like they're going to improve the integrated graphics side somewhat. So it'll be interesting to see. So they go from trash to half trash. I don't know. You For know. gaming, Intel's integrated graphics aren't very good. But, you know... Intel's integrated graphics are great for content creation, media transcoding. You know, they've got a great media engine. Yes. So, because well, there's, there's a lot of people out there on integrated graphics. So, that, that could be interesting. But will it play Crisis? <laughs> uh, what else is there? So, that means that. The LGA 1851 socket for Arrow Lake will have a different Z height, which means that you will need a new cooler. Really? That's what it says here. Um, may not be fully compatible without a necessary mounting kit upgrade. That's going to be interesting. I see. have not heard that before. So... My understanding if, is they were trying to make those compatible so that you could keep your coolers. Intel, look... You can criticize Intel for a lot of things, but they're really good about cooler compatibility. Yes, we had to have new brackets for LGA 1700. It was a different size socket, but from Sandy Bridge all the way to 11th gen, second to 11th. Sandy was fourth? Sandy was second. Oh, oh, second. Okay. For 10 generations of CPUs, the same coolers worked. I mean, and before then, on LGA 775, and before then, um, the Pentium 4 chips, uh, the 400 series socket, a lot of coolers throughout the 2000s, the aughts, all worked. Mm. Intel has a really good track record of coolers lasting a long, long time. Now, in fairness, AMD does as well. I'm not criticizing AMD here, but if you do need a mounting kit upgrade after just well technically i guess three socket gens 12th 13th 14th that'll suck it'll be a, few, a bit of a teething a teething yes there'll be some teething issues there definitely the question is is it going to be another change in z height when they do their thing i don't think people think about it. they think of the mounting holes as being the issue like where the mounting holes going but the physical no, height of the CPU exactly. is an issue as well. Because you can only put so much thermal paste on. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Thicker thermal paste. <laughs> Big thank you to your CD keys. Save 25% off your authentic game codes and program keys using the discount code TD20. Windows 10 Pro OEM Global Lifetime Key, $22, but take 25% off that. It makes it about 15 bucks. And MS Office 2021 Professional Plus Key, this comes out to about 60-ish dollars when you take 25% off. These keys work forever. They activate with your Microsoft account. They work through Windows reinstalls, both of them do. We have been using URCD keys for five years, since March of 2022. 2018. 18. Five, yeah, five years. The streaming computer that we are streaming on right now mm -hmm. was this activated one. two weeks ago Boom. with a URCD keys key. Mm -hmm. No offline trickery, no nonsense. These are not volume license keys. They will work forever. I've used the PID checker to make sure that they're actual keys. Yep. I've posted that before. We have. We've done a video on this as well. We have. And the office keys are so ridiculously simple. 
Once they give you the key, you go to setup.office.com, which is Microsoft's website. You log in with your Microsoft account. You say, I have a key. You paste it and it says, hey, welcome. You have Office 2021. Would you like to download it now? Yep. And if you want to re-download it in the future, guess what? You log into your Office account and you re-download it again. You can. Funny that. It, it just works. It's easy. Peace of mind. And it's a lot less expensive than the other choices. It is. So this is going to be interesting for those people who are going to skip all this mess and head to Arrow Lake. Okay. Good to know. I don't think Arrow Lake is it. I think you've either upgraded for Raptor or Alder Lake. Or you wait for Luna. You wait for... 16th. Yeah. Some, some Just like 12th gen buyers probably should have waited for 13th gen. 13, yeah. You buy the last chip on a platform, not the first chip on a platform. Like you don't buy the 6700K, you buy the 7700K. You don't buy the 8700K, you buy the 9900K. You buy whatever the best chip on a platform is. Mm -hmm. Now a ton of people bought Sandy, but of course that was also a different era and Sandy was a huge leap over everything else and Ivy Bridge wasn't a huge bump to be honest. But it's a generalized rule that sort of makes sense. There we go. Okay. Intel needs to hope the socket bracket doesn't bend. Well, I really like what AMD has done with the AM5 socket where it's now permanently mounted. There's no fall through bracket on the bottom like AM4 did. Yeah, I remember that. It's just mounted on the board. It's, it's like Intel did with HEDT. The, the holes and the socket is okay. fixed. Mm -hmm. The hole, yeah, just have a board with holes in it and you, you know, do you have different mounting back plates? Anyway. Well, Dylan Allen has a point. You don't buy 11900K instead of 10900K. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> 